Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing amazingly well. I hope your day is going great. I hope life's treating you okay. All that good stuff, you know, the huge. Nearly filmed a whole video with the ugly wristband. That would have really pissed me off. I'm just vlogging a little behind the scenes, so he'll be gone in a minute. Don't mind the camera. <laughs> Grab yourself a little tea. We're gonna have a little chit chat today. The time has come. I've had my fun, I've done my spending. I've got a nice new arsenal of products to play with. It is time to do another Project 10 Pan. Project 10 Pan is not something I created. It is quite a well-known thing on YouTube. There's quite a nice community on YouTube surrounding Project 10 Pan. It's basically a challenge for makeup and beauty collectors and lovers to basically reduce how much product they're buying, but also to help to encourage them to use up the products that they already have. You choose 10 products, 10 pans of product or bottles or whatever to completely finish up before you're allowed to purchase any new makeup. So this is purely gonna be makeup. Last time I did the first six months with skincare as well and I had a massive breakout because I ran out of all my favorite skincare and I just was using random products. I'm not doing that again. We're just gonna do makeup, okay? <laughs> I have my 10 core products, and then once I use up one of those products, I replace it with a new product that gets added to the 10 pan rotation. Project 10 pan comes to an end when the original 10 are all finished. Adding them as you go kind of just helps encourage me to try new things in my collection and also use up products that I already have. And it makes me use new things kind of regularly. It also helps me find new favorites. It gets rid of a load of my makeup clutter. And honestly, doing this last time was so amazing for me. Honestly, my makeup collection halved in size. I was way more mindful of the products that I was using. Hang on, let me just turn off the vlog camera. I mean, it's backlit anyway, you literally, is that footage usable? Probably not. <laughs> it made me appreciate the products that I already had. And I basically no longer craved that dopamine hit of buying new makeup. And in the long run, it did me a world of good. I finished that midway through last year, towards the end of last year. And then I allowed myself six, eight months, I can't remember how long exactly, to basically purchase everything that I've really, 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 really wanted to try over the two years where I wasn't allowed to buy any makeup, which made those purchases way more special. And I was way more excited to try them all. I had so much fun testing loads of new products. I still have loads of those products to share. That massive haul was one of two that I did across those six months. If you haven't seen those makeup hauls, check on my channel. I've got a massive beauty haul that I posted a couple of months ago. Maybe it was late November um, where I bought basically all the things that I've been drooling over. I've been slowly but surely kind of testing them on camera. There's still loads left to test. So it's not like you guys are not gonna get any first impressions. The reason that those hauls were so big is because I knew I wanted to do this. Who's texting me? Oh God. Uh, okay, great. It's fine. <laughs> so I knew that I wanted to do this again because I noticed how much um, it helped me honestly, with my shopping habits, again, with my relationship with my makeup. It is starting today. As of today, I am not gonna be buying any makeup products. So all those new launches, all those exciting new releases, I am not going to be buying. I also mentioned in a vlog recently, I've taken myself off of the majority of the PR lists that I was on before because going from being really excessive with my purchasing of makeup because it was for a video, using them once or twice and then just having a huge collection of makeup going to waste, um, when I would get PR in, because my mindset had kind of shifted towards makeup, I started to find it a little bit overwhelming because I didn't crave the excess anymore, if you know what I mean. I'm still on a few lists of brands that I really, really, really love, like Charlotte Tilbury and NARS, and I'm so grateful to be on those lists. And I worked really hard to get on those lists. So I'm like, I don't wanna take myself off of those. So I am gonna also, of course, say, I understand that I'm in a privileged position where I will still be receiving some PR throughout the month, but nowhere near as I used to and nowhere near as much as I did in my first round of Project 10 Pan. There will still be some testing videos throughout this period of time because I will still be getting some new products, but I will not be buying them. So I won't be kind of filling that craving with buying things. I think that's everything I wanted to say. It will last as long as it lasts. Uh, last time it was about two and a half years. <laughs> crazy. I don't know how long it will be this time. We will see. I learned quite a lot from last time when it came to my selection of products that I've chosen to 
use. Last time I did it, I think I had like three different bronzers, which makes literally no sense in hindsight because I only use one, maybe two bronzers a day. Trying to use them day to day was really difficult because it meant that it lasted so much longer than I thought it would. And of course, when it comes to products on camera, it doesn't mean that I'm just gonna use my 10 pan products in makeup tutorials. I do have a full collection of makeup specifically for filming and stuff like that, which I will obviously tap into. So it's not gonna make the content boring, but it's just a personal challenge for me and something that I thought maybe you'd like to follow along with. I would like to start doing my monthly favorites every month again. I'm not gonna do January because I just posted my 2022 favorites and honestly, the products are basically the same, but I'll be starting in February and in those favorites videos, I will also be doing my monthly Project 10 Pan update. So any empties that I have, any kind of progress with products, I will be documenting monthly and showing you at the end of each month, which is how I did it last time. And I think you guys really enjoyed that routine. Also, it's a nice way to do my monthly favorites as well. Adds a little bit of interest. Getting not that many new products in means that I don't have many new favorites to show. So <laughs> those videos could be really short. So adding that extra element just makes them a little bit more interesting for you. So, whew, I've been talking for nine minutes and I haven't started showing you the products yet. I'm gonna have a swig and then I'm gonna show you Project 10 Pan 2023's product selects. I could have chose a cuter mug, but this is one of my favorite mugs. <laughs> it was my favorite mug at my dad's house. And then when I moved out, he gave it to me. It's not really my aesthetic. It's a golf mug, but I just like how it feels. I like the size of it. I just love this mug and I will never get rid of it. <laughs> I've thought, long and hard about these 10 products. And the way that I've decided I know it's gonna work is because the makeup I'm wearing on my face right now is basically a full face of my Project 10 Pan products, apart from my eyebrows, my mascara, glitter, and my lip liner. But everything else is just from this makeup bag. So I know that I can use all of these products every single day. So I will do a makeup look using my 10 products in the next week or two. It might be this look, it might be slightly different. Um, I just did something quick just to make sure I could do a full face. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. I've gone for like one of each category and I hope, I think it's gonna work much better. Without further ado, this is very rambly. I'm excited, can you tell? <laughs> so I'm gonna go in the order that I put these on my face and I have a combination here of old like old products that I've had for a really long time that I used to really like and kind of forgot about, fell out of love with, um, as well as a few more current favorites that I use all the time that I would like to use up or things that I already have backups of, things like that. The first product is a Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter because I use this every single day and I feel like it's nice to have a couple of slightly easier products in 10 pan to make it seem a little bit less daunting. And also I already have one, two, three, four, five products lined up to go into the rotation. So don't worry, <laughs> this probably won't last me long. I use this every single day. This one has probably got a week's worth of uses left in it. It'll probably be an empty in the first empties video, but Hollywood Flawless Filter, I absolutely love this product and I use it every single day. And this bottle is nearly gone, so I thought I'd ease my way in with an empty that I know will happen quite soon. The foundation, so I'm an absolute fiend for foundations. I love trying new foundations. It's my favorite product to test out, but I thought for this one, I would use up a product that I absolutely love because once this is gone, it will encourage me to use other things for the rest of the time. So my foundation for Project 10 Pan is gonna be the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. It looks really full. I did just shake it. It's probably got about this much left, a good kind of month or two's worth of product left in here. Another reason that I chose this is because it is a foundation that I know will work every day for any occasion. I can make it look really natural. I can go really full glam with this. I know it will last all day. It is my favorite foundation. So I know that regardless of the occasion, I will wear this and feel comfortable wearing it. So it's a great choice for 10 pan because I can use it basically for every occasion and wear it anytime I wear makeup. Once this is gone, it will encourage me to use up other foundations in my collection and actually use the collection that I've built through my sheer love of testing products. 
product. Next is actually another NARS product. It's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which is an old, old school product that I've loved for 10 plus years now. Kind of similar reasons to the foundation. I know it will be a great concealer to use every single day, any occasion, light coverage, full coverage glams, but also I want to experiment and play with my other concealers. So knowing that this isn't a fallback option will force me to find new love affairs in my collection. And this is also about half empty, so, or half full, I'm an optimist. Thank you. <laughs> it needs to go. It's also quite an old bottle, as is the NARS foundation, so they need to get used up anyway. So that's product number three. Cream bronzer. The one I've decided to go for is the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer in the shade Honey Glaze. As you can see, this is already hit pan. I do tend to go for products that have hit pan because again, it is just more for the brain it makes you feel like you're closer to your goal if you already choose products that have been hit pan, that you've hit pan on. But recently I have kind of neglected it. I've been using a lot of my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, my Huda Beauty bronzer, my Mitchell bronzer, and I feel like this one's been kind of left behind a little bit recently. So I wanna give it the love it deserves, use it up, finish it off, and let's hope I do it soon. Okay, so it wouldn't be an Emma's Rectangle Project 10 pan without a hula bronzer in it. <laughs> so in last Project 10 pan, I chose a mini hula bronzer and it took me forever to use. If you watched my 10 pan last year or two years ago, you will remember how much I was battling with that hula bronzer. And I have decided to upgrade to the big boy this year. I use this every day to contour my nose, to contour my cheekbones. I do use this every single day. Now I'm just interested to see how long it takes me. So this is where we're at. To be fair, since finishing up the little one, I've really made a good dent in this product. Yeah, I'm interested to see how long it takes me. I feel like there will always be a hula bronzer in my Project 10 pan because it is just a product that it takes so long to use up. I feel like this is the thing that is like the benchmark for how well I'm doing in the project. Okay, I've got a setting powder and this is really old school and it's so nearly empty. It's just taking up space in my makeup drawer. Just, it needs to go. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder. There is barely any left, but this stuff lasts a long time. But I do already have a brand new one. So I wanna use this one up. <laughs> I found this in my drawer. And I was like, why have I opened a new one when I have one still going? So I wanna finish this up so I can move on to my new one. Okay, so the blush I decided to choose, blush is also one that takes freaking forever because you don't need a lot of blush. I'll be honest, recently I have become a bit of a basic bitch with my blush. And the only blushes that I'm wearing are my Made by Mitchell blush and my Dior blush. I wear them every single day. They've been the only blush I've worn in my tutorials recently, and I am just in such a love affair with them. But I know I need to branch out different undertones, different colors, different textures. So I decided to put a blush in my Project 10 pan. And this is one that I used to absolutely love. I used to wear it every single day years ago. It's very old. It's probably very expired. <laughs> Blush doesn't really, eh, it's fine. This is Benefit's Rocketeur blush. This blush had me in a chokehold in like 2018, I would say. Years and years and years ago, I used to wear this every single day. It's the blush that I'm wearing today and I forgot, it is a really pretty blush. It's different for me. It's not my usual like pop of blush. It's much more subtle, much more of like a rosy natural glow, but I, wore it today for the first time in years. Like I've probably not put this on my face in about two years, at least two years, more than that, honestly, more than that. And I was like, that's nice. That is nice, that can be in it. It's like a gorgeous kind of bronzy pink with like a little bit of a sheen to it. And I've hit pan on this massively, like for a blush, I have made such a huge dent in this that I know I must have loved it. I feel like I can use this up and I'm excited to use this and have like a day-to-day -day blush. I think it is gonna take its sweet time to use up, but I'm ready, I'm ready for the challenge. I honestly make it sound so serious, it's literally a makeup bag. I don't know, if you get it, you get it, I think. Highlight, so don't think I had a highlighter in my core 10 last time because 
the idea of it was just massively overwhelming. It might have actually been a cream highlight that was nearly empty, something like that, because highlight you don't use a lot. RIP, I have this Becca palette, Becca Forever in Our Hearts. If you've been with me for a long time, then you might recognize this palette. I used to use this palette every single day. Like I was so in love with it and I still am. It's a gorgeous palette. This was my everyday makeup. In this palette, there is an opal highlight, which I'm wearing today. It's pretty. I am definitely more of a cream highlight person these days. Like I rarely gravitate towards powders. This palette is just taking up space. I used to love the bronzer. I also really like the blush. So I'll probably try and make myself use these every once in a while as well, while I'm using the palette. I have never used these three colors. So now when I shop for a makeup palette, it's really important to me that I will use at least 90% of the shades, enough to justify the purchase of the entire palette because otherwise you are just wasting loads of product. I have so many palettes that I love one product, one pan that you could buy as an individual pan. And I use this whole palette, which takes up all this space just for this one thing, which I really try not to do anymore. Like if I'm buying a face palette, these days I really try to make sure that I will use most of the shades in order to make it worth buying for me. That's something I've really learned from Project 10 Pan last time. For example, this Hourglass palette that I love, this was in my 10 Pan last year, but it was one of the add-ons, so I never got to finish it. But you can see the colors that I love to use and then the ones that I never use. And it's just a waste of those other three colors. Long story short, I'd like to get rid of this palette, use up the products inside the palette that I actually really love, and then put it onto greener pastures. The 10 Pan product in here is the highlight, Becca Opal. But I also, as like a sub goal, before I throw away the palette, I would like to maybe hit pan on the bronzer as like a sub goal. But once I finish this, this palette is going. That's my highlighter. For eyeshadows, I think it was actually quite easy for me to decide which palette I wanted to use. Because again, it's a palette that I love and did love and I never, ever, ever use anymore, ever. <laughs> there are so many new palettes. I use a lot of individuals. And I also honestly barely wear eyeshadow these days. You guys know me, I, I'm a really basic makeup girl these days. So I wanted to choose a neutral eyeshadow palette ultimately so I could wear it more often. That is again, another example of a few colors I love and then the rest I never use. So I have chosen the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. What a throwback. <laughs> I think the rule I did with my eyeshadows last year is I want to completely finish two colors and hit pan on three. I think that's what it was. I can't remember, but I think that's what I wanna do on this one. I'd like to finish up two colors and hit pan on three before I can get rid of it. Because these colors are beautiful, but the majority of them just aren't colors I gravitate towards these days. I think it's pretty obvious. The two colors I would like to completely use up are Burnt Orange and Sienna. Because I mean, Burnt Orange is nearly entirely gone anyway. And then the three that I'd like to hit pan on, I'm gonna go for Orange Soda, Dusty Rose, because that's gonna push me to wear more cool tones, I think. Oh, I used a lot of Mulberry. There's a big dent in Mulberry. I feel like that's a bit, yeah, you know what? Mulberry, I need to finish. Burnt orange, sienna, and then I need to hit pan on mulberry, orange soda, and dusty rose. Those are the eyeshadow goals. And while I use this palette, I will obviously use the other colors, but those are my five main focuses because that can make me a really dramatic eye, but also a daytime smoky eye. I think this is probably the thing that's gonna take me the longest because I don't wear eyeshadow that much, but I kind of want to get back into it, so. I think this is a good way to do that. Finally, the final product, I've decided to go for a lip product because I didn't do a lip product last time, but the lip product that I'd like to use up is the Charlotte Tilbury Tinted Love. It's annoying that you can't see inside it. Maybe I should have gone for a bullet so you can actually watch the progress. This is pretty full. <laughs> the shade Bohemian Kiss, but I wear this all the time. I absolutely love it. I have another one. They sent me a backup. I'm like, why not? Why not just finish this off and see how long it takes me to finish a lip tint? Yeah, it's the color that I'm wearing right now. So that's exciting. It means that I can use them every day. I know that I have a look that I can do to quickly throw on. And it also will work kind of just as my everyday makeup bag, which isn't how I did it last time. And I think that that would be a much better approach. Cause yeah, it all just fits. 
in a little makeup bag. It will make me so quick to get ready. That's another thing I actually really loved about Tempan is I didn't take ages getting ready because I didn't have to think about what to use. I just knew I had 10 products that I had to use. This is day to day, not on camera, but day to day. I didn't have that kind of decision paralysis that I often get when it comes to choosing my makeup in the morning. I just know what I'm gonna use because it's what I have to use. So yeah, that video actually turned out being a lot longer than I planned. I know that I've probably been talking for about 45 minutes, but hopefully it's like a 25 minute video. We'll see. Those are all the products. A little sneak peek. I already have six products lined up to add to the 10 pan once I've used up those ones. Ready and raring to go. But that is my project 10 pan. That is what we are doing this year. I'm really excited. If you guys would like to join and do a project 10 pan yourselves, then let me know. Let me know if you're excited that I'm doing it again. I know a lot of you really loved it. I'm gonna try and be better this year at like showing you before and afters every single month keeping these original clips of the product and then showing you side by sides because I think that'll be quite a satisfying way of doing it. I want to do it this year and I want to do it better than I did last time. I hope you're excited. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on my little 10 pan journey. I hope you have the best blimmin day ever. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I will see you on Sunday for the weekly vlog. Bye! Mm -hmm.